Subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to press the bell icon to get all the latest updates. Once again, India has seen a record surge in cases of the COVID-19. In fact, this time it is 57,000 cases and epidemiologists are warning that these numbers could go up. But the recovery rate is over 64% as well. As India enters Unlock 3, the third phase of unlocking, the center has ruled out herd immunity as an option for the country saying we just have to wait for a vaccine. So schools, for example, continue to remain shut as does international airline travel other than the stipulated flights under the Vande Bharat program. Now, all of this has happened as a serological survey placed in the public domain in the city of Mumbai showed that 57% of the city's slum residents were COVID positive and recovered on their own. This number was 16% for non-slum areas. Those who have worked on the survey have told us that 57% is an underestimation because the samples were not taken from containment zone. In other words, a much higher number of people asymptomatically had the virus and have recovered from it. The survey seems to suggest herd immunity, but the center is rejecting it. Joining us now to make sense of all of this is India's foremost uh, epidemiologist, Dr. Mulil. Dr. Mulil, it's a pleasure to have you back with us. I want to start by asking you, you have been one of the early advocates of herd immunity vis-a-vis -vis the lockdown, but you believe that a uh, critical mass would have to be reached before we could start talking about herd immunity. The serological survey results from Mumbai seems to point in that direction, but the government at the center is not accepting it. How do you read this? Uh, let me put it in the right perspective. Question number one, does the infection with the virus produce a good immune response in our body? And there were a lot of anxiety and a lot of people who warned us, it doesn't, and even if it does, it lasts a short time. Fortunately, the evidence or bulk of it suggests there is a good immunity that each one got infected develops. There's also a good news from the point of view of being optimistic about a vaccine. Remember, both vaccine and the virus do the same thing. They stimulate the immune system. So if the natural infection doesn't provoke a good immune response, then how can you even imagine that the vaccine would? But now that we are convinced that the virus is producing a good immune response, people are getting better, People are even donating the plasma to cure other people. So there is something happening and immunologically it is good. Now, my point of view at the beginning of the whole fiasco was this, the vaccine would take time. In the meantime, a lockdown will be too hard for Indian masses to handle. It is not easy. You know, you have to live each family in isolation and try to get rid of the virus. We tried. It didn't work. But at that time, I pointed out, even if you are not able to put lockdown and strictly control people's movement, because people have to live, mind you, there is a one possible scenario that there will be a strong immune response in the community, which means that everybody doesn't have to get infected. About half get infected, the remaining half will be protected. And this is a classical teaching in epidemiology that if it is a virus, which is transmitted from person to person, and if it produces good immune response, then we can hope that it will somewhere along the line, halfway through, call a halt 
without us struggling to do so. But do you Now, believe? This is an, do you believe what? we are there? Do you believe, Dr. Mulyal, that we are at the point of herd immunity? And if we are, why is the government not accepting it as a way forward? It's a definite of we that is a problem. We, as meaning the whole India, it cannot be there simultaneously. It appears to be happening uh, that the disease is clearly peaking in big cities. I know it is doing it in uh, Delhi because we can see the results of the zero survey. It is happening in many places. In Mumbai, it is happening in Chennai. Now, what do I base my argument? Not only on zero survey, but also behavior of these conglomeration. For example, Dharavi used to come out with more, hundred, more than 100 cases every day. Now they are in single digits. And what is the reason? Please don't tell me our containment work. No, containment only nurtured the uh, you know, immune level from 0 to 10 to 20, reached 57, and suddenly there is no more new cases, or very few. So it's good. It's a good sign. You don't have to be embarrassed about it. I cannot understand why somebody should negate it. Agreed, we need a vaccine. And I'm saying the vaccine is going to be good. In the meantime, let us not tell all these millions of people they suffered in vain. They had the disease, they came out of it, they are a citizen. The bonus they get is they will have long time immunity. If they don't have long time immunity, no vaccine can provide. Let me ask you about this. So one, I'm understanding that you're saying that there will not be a national herd immunity, but in pockets, geographies, specific geographies will begin to show signs of, of herd uh, immunity. That's first. The second thing you're saying is that the immunity will be long lasting once it's there. Now, several doctors say we don't know that yet. They say the immunity may last for two to three months and then it may start to win. There are two arguments against why this anxiety is wrongly placed. First of all, there is a way you measure the potential for T cell, the long term immunity. At least two centers, independent to my knowledge, have demonstrated. More interestingly, other SARS viruses that came earlier. Some people who have been infected, they also possess the long term immunity. So, this is some, not nothing new. Most other viruses we know measles, German measles, all of them give you lasting immunity. So, there is, there is not new magic term or anything. And I remember this talk about. No, 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 this is not a good immunity, no good immunity. There are so many people shouting. In fact, I had to ask an ANC once Is there any objection to people developing good immunity? Are you anxious? They should not. That would be unfair, right? And remember, even if you belong to the vaccine section, you should be proud of the fact that the virus is inducing at least a decent immunity. What about reports, sir, that suggest that there are people who have recovered from COVID, but they're returning to hospitals with other complications, with inflammatory uh, disorders and other related illnesses, which has made doctors review whether this is only a respiratory virus or a virus that hits the respiratory system? Well, the. I don't know if you can really answer the question. Remember, most people who become ill with the virus, majority don't, mind you, majority of something, have some comorbidities. You understand? Yes. So you want to put on the virus? Fine. I don't own the virus, I have no monopoly over it. 
Right. But, and I am not against the vaccine. I want people to get vaccinated. But remember, in earning the herd immunity, we lost lives, but we had no option. And the and you know something, all the metrics we used in counting the virus or the disease was greatly flawed, as you saw from the zero survey. Around the time we were saying we reached one million cases, at the same time, Delhi reported four million people already infected and cured and with immunity. So we are nowhere near the correct metrics. What are you looking at? Okay. You're basically the saying, number gave, sir, 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 I want to understand this. You're basically saying that the serological survey findings in Delhi or Mumbai show us that the numbers of those infected are way higher than the official statistics, one, but that they have recovered on their own shows that the virus may not be as lethal as we fear. Correct. And the body is producing a good immunity. So far, after millions of people worldwide have been attacked, there have been a few scanty reports to my knowledge of finding some virus again in the, you know, identifying them. But by and large, it is holding on. Now remember, basically science work on certain norms. The norm for the virus is very clear now. Most of the infection, subclinical. Some develop pneumonia. A small percentage die. Mostly the elderly and those with comorbidity. That's a game. After the recovery, they are perfectly all right. And they are good for future because, and you know, we are now marginal in them. In fact, somebody introduced himself to me. Oh, you know, I have, my family is COVID-affected. COVID affected? What do you mean? He's COVID liberated. Okay. So that is not the way to create a panic in the people. Can I ask you what your own estimation is of the infection rate? Or are you saying the infection rate is almost irrelevant? Because if most people are asymptomatic, then how does it matter what the infection rate is? It should be the death rate we're talking about. We, we are worried about the mortality. Yes. Okay. Mortality is 0.5% of the infected people. That is, 1,000 people get infected. Five could uh, die, 0.5%. So that is the rate we, we are looking at. But my argument is with herd immunity, only 50% of the mortality will occur because you will be protected. I am giving good news. And some people are believing, not believing. Why? That's interesting. It's a morbid kind of a situation. Somebody tell tells me. you something nice. Yeah. Go ahead. You're, you're saying you're giving us good news. Now, given your understanding of the good news, what should no longer remain locked? You were never a great fan of the lockdown. Many things have opened, many things remain shut. Is it time, Dr. Mulyal, to open schools? When I suggested this, I had a volley of angry parents, even doctors saying I was out of my mind. Uh, my point was that how long, if this virus is going to be around, if the infection rates are going to rise, but if we are actually looking at localized herd immunity, if cities are doing better than, some places in India are doing better than others, should there be a phased reopening of schools or is it not time yet? Well, I think even if you say a lockdown open, it should be voluntary. If some elderly people would like to be separated from the crowd and they want to put themselves down, I would appreciate it. Uh, they can't take the risk. For a 40, 30 year old person, this is a joke. Uh, and I don't think their life should be spoiled behind the closed door. So what I suggest is that clarify the situation to the people. Encourage those without with morbidities or a old age not to venture out too much. But for others, life should go on. How long are you going to wait with this kind of a fiasco? What about schools, also, sir? Schools. 
Now, according to all the evidence collected all over the world, children under the age of 15 are safe. Okay? Now, when I say safe, there may be exception. Some in one in a hundred thousand can have a problem. But by and large, it's safe. And our healthcare system in India, looking after children, are pretty good. They can take care of most places. But there is nothing called zero risk anyway. You send a child to school on a bus, can there be an accident? This is much, much, infinitely smaller than that. So this, this remember, many people have lost their livelihood. Many people have problem meeting the need. Not only that, this whole business of chasing the virus, we have actually ignoring the, our rights of our citizens, okay? Very often, the autonomy is not granted. And people are, the families face major problems. Do you know there is a technique by which you come and put a chain around the house, your gate, so that you can't get out if you're going to the infectious case? Now, yeah. that is fine in the containment phase. Now... We have millions of people with infection. What are you going to do? Lock them all up? Parents say, I parents, when I suggested this, parents said that children would not wear masks and it would be very difficult to get children in a classroom to wear masks. I don't blame because the education about these things have been very poor. Okay? I also have grandchildren. And you ask them, they tell you straightforward. But COVID never affects children. Yes, that is the answer. Okay, so we have to give correct information. See, fear is a wrong emotion to deal emergencies with. And I can understand the phase. Fear was there and it was understandable. But if after all these things, we have not been able to educate people, say, listen, there are mixed messages going Okay, yeah. from yeah. everywhere. But at least now the consolidated information should make you feel more confident. And even people who work in ICU are more confident about pulling patients out of trouble. So, so finally, yeah. finally, Dr. Mulyal, what would you open and what would you still keep closed? I would leave it to the experts of each state. What I will do is you watch the zero survey report very carefully and you'll find that people have noticed it. Mumbai, from the municipality, commissioner told me, I can see something. Wherever this survey results are high, hardly any cases are emerging. Thank you. That he, that she did, she, you observed it very carefully. Yeah. You don't need to be an epidemiologist. So, first of all, you need to open up locally and gradually more widespread. And remember, this time the information has to go to the senior citizen to be away. For example, Mumbai trains, they already are running and the rules are different. You say, okay, everybody below 40, from tomorrow onwards, you can use the train. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Because they are at no risk for any in danger. Gradually, step by step, we could unlock where our workforce come out. Okay. We have hidden behind the doors for too long. And the surge, when you read these daily surges in cases, that doesn't worry you because the serological surveys are already pointing to a much higher number than the official figures. Much, much higher number. Several fold, 20, 30 times more. So 20, 30 times more Indians are in, or have been infected with COVID than we know. And I want to pass a message to them. Once you are infected, you are immune. Don't trust anybody else because it has to be so. That's how the nature works. If it is not so, please call me again. I'll apologize in public. All right, Dr. Muller, let's end on a note of good news. I think everybody needs, uh, needs to hear some good news. Pleasure talking to you and learning from you as always. Thank you, sir.